What's going on, everybody? Today, we're going to be taking a look at the art multiverb. Now, this is a really old unit. This thing comes from two years before I even picked up a musical instrument. 1988. And back in the day, these things were one of the most sought-after effects units out there, period. This is back when uh, rack mount units ruled the audio world. It's actually a fairly decent unit. It's got a bunch of reverbs. Uh, it's got a pitch transpose, chorus. We're going to be going through a bunch of stuff in there today. It was actually a really big unit back in 1988. Everybody wanted one of these things. This unit was given to me by a good friend of mine, Mr. Rick Carr. And uh, it was a little worse for wear. There was quite a bit of corrosion. You can still see some, some traces of corrosion over by the first few buttons. It was stored in some place. It was a little wet, let's say. But I brought it to my good friend, as always, Mr. Jay Swapman at LaSalle Music. He uh, did a lot of cleanup. Basically, from what he said, he had to bathe most of the components in contact cleaner. But now it's, uh, it's all running good. What I'm going to mainly use this for is for bass guitar. But back in the day, these units were used in PAs for vocal effects and effects on every instrument. Basically an all-around effects unit for in the PA, uh, reverbs, delays, pitch shifts, uh, choruses, flangers. It's got a whole bunch of effects in it. But what I'm going to be utilizing this for is to throw into my bass guitar rack. That's what I'm going to be utilizing this for. Now, it's quite an old unit, but it can still really kick really well. For this demonstration here, as we can see here, I got a completely blank preset blank name no effects no nothing on it right now so basically we have our up and down buttons for our presets over there i'm just using preset 153 1 through 100 are uh, factory made presets but you can unlock them a couple two three hundred banks or something like that let's see how many there is total here how many different preset banks do we have that goes up to 200 so 100 uh Factory made presets, default factory presets, and 100 that you can do with what you will. If you want to actually edit presets 1 through 100, you have to go into the MIDI edit utility, and from there, unlock presets 0 through 100. And then for every change you make, you have to keep on going back and doing that. Now, I'm not going to use anywhere near 100 presets, so preset 101 and up is more than enough for me. What I'm going to use is this blank preset that I have here right now to preview all the different possible effects that you have. Now, there's this button here that would switch you through just selecting up and down through the banks or the edit button. So basically, I hit that and it goes into edit mode where I can add an effect. And this is add effect button right here. Let's go ahead and click add effect. And then by keep on clicking, the add effect button, it'll cycle through all the potential effects that we have in there, such as an equalizer, a flanger, a chorus, a pitch transposer, a panner, a short mono delay, a long mono delay, reverb one, reverb two, reverb three, gate verb one, Gate verb two, gate verb three, tap delay short, tap delay long, raining delay short, raining delay long, stereo delay short, stereo delay long. As you can see, quite a few different effects in there. I think you can only add like roughly four blocks at a time and it doesn't allow you to add certain ones in series with them. So it is very limited. Again, it is a 
20-bit uh, multiple effects processor from 1988. This unit can be run in stereo. It is absolutely a stereo unit. But the way I'm running this is I'm running it mono. I'm going into the left input and out of the left output, which is usually mono in most cases. And as always for this demonstration, the signal chain is always as, as follows as my Ibanez sound gear Geo Series modified six string bass directly into the left input of the multiverb, out of the left output of the multiverb, into a passive DI box, into the interface, and what you're hearing coming back is just the raw DI track with no post processing on it whatsoever. So here's the dry tone. Here it is with absolutely nothing in it. Right over here, that is just your, your basic bass guitar. So let's now go and add an effect. All right, first one up is equalizer. To actually add that effect, we have to hit the recall enter button. All right, now it's been added. As you can see, we're still on edit mode. So now we use the select left and right value to go through the different variables that we can do on it. And it's a very basic EQ. As we see here, we got that variable and we use the up and down to change it. Right now it has an High frequency cut through. We got a 12K cut, 8.4K cut, 6.6K cut, 5.3, 4.4K, 3.3K, 2.9, 2.4, all the way down to 665. That's pretty much what we can do with the EQ there. Now, let's hear what this sounds like with it on. That's with the high cut on. Now, when you're making any changes, there's this store button over here to save the changes. So let's go ahead and save that by clicking on the store button. All right. Now we can take it off edit mode. So here's with the EQ. back into the edit mode because I actually think that that EQ is a little too harsh. Now with bass guitar, I would like to set a cut somewhere around the 1K mark. Nice 1K cut or maybe 1.4K. Well, let's try storing that. All right. And then we'll take it out of edit mode. So once again, we'll hit the bypass. We'll hear it without the EQ on now that we added it to a little bit more than 1K. Now, with that EQ on. Definitely hear the difference in there. So, okay, now let's go in there. Once again, we'll go back to edit mode with the edit button. And if we ever want to remove any of the effects, we just go delete effect, delete equalizer, recall enter, that'll delete. So let's try adding another effect. Let's try the flanger. So once again, you keep on hitting the add effect button to cycle through them. To select, you hit recall enter. 
Now to select different parameters within there, let's see what we have with the select left and right button. We can make it post or pre, we got a width, we got a speed, we got a range. All right, so let's make it in the value up and down buttons, we'll change the value. Let's make it free. Let's make the width about 50%. Let's make the speed maybe five. And the rain also about 50%. Now let's store that. All right. Now we're going to bypass that. This is without the flange. Now with the flange. Yeah, yeah, not bad, a little flange. Um, I'm not too crazy about flange on a bass, but just kind of showing off some of these tones for you. <laughs> still in edit mode so I can delete that effect hit the recall enter let's see what else we got here we got a nice little chorus all right let's add that let's see the different parameters we got I usually like it always in pre myself same idea with speed the delay I'm going to keep it on the default of what it has on it. Let's see how we're sounding here. Yeah, not a bad little chorus either. Definitely not a bad little chorus at all. Now the pitch transposer. This is one of my favorite things in the whole unit right here, and especially for bass. I absolutely love this. What I do is I give it a low octave down. This is like, this alone is what I want the, the uh, multiverb for in my bass rig. It tracks remarkably well for being on a bass guitar. So obviously with the pitch transposer, you got, you know, negative 12, that's an octave down. I can go to positive 12, which is an octave up. Gives you all options for all harmonies in between. Um, this is what's really cool about it for me. That 
is just heavy as all hell. And even on my low B string, it tracks pretty well sometimes. That alone is worth the price of admission as far as I'm concerned. Now, when you go an octave up, it doesn't track as well, but it's still kind of cool. I think I had another preset that I made that was a little better for that, but, you know. Not really going to go through the panner, obviously, because I'm running this thing mono. Let's go through some of the different delays, which I won't really be using on bass so much. Nice little ping-pongy millisecond, uh, 100 millisecond delay. That's pretty much the only thing there is just the amount of delay in milliseconds. Here's a long mono delay. <laughs> bunch of different delays. Let's try one of the reverbs. That's set up pretty intensely. Let's, uh, so we got Hall, Decay, HF Dampen, Vision Level. And by the way, we got a mix over here. For every one of these presets that we have digitally, we have an input, an output, and a mix. I keep the mix at about 50-50, especially when I'm using the uh, pitch transpose, because I want, you know, half of the note that I'm actually playing and half of the note that I'm being transposed to to give me a nice even mix. So I'm just putting that as a 50-50 throughout everything for everything that I have on here. Obviously, we have a lot. Of, let's do a hall delay with a little bit less of a decay. Bring the damp down a little bit. Position a little bit less.
so we get the idea. So that's it in a nutshell, everybody. A good old piece of gear that I'm going to be repurposing to put into my base rig. Again, these were used as multi-effects units in studios, in racks of PAs for vocals, for drums, for guitars, basses, for, for pretty much everything. But I'm going to be utilizing it for just a, a few effects. I'm not going to go too crazy on this in my base unit. But uh, so, yeah, there you have it. There's a whole bunch of different awesome effects in there. I'm not going to go through each and every one of them, but just a little bit of a run through on some of the things that can be done with this here unit. I think it's a very good unit. I'm going to utilize it for uh, definitely in my bass rig for some pitch transpose to get some low and high octaves. Maybe the odd fifth here and there. A little bit of chorus, a little bit of flange, and I'll probably use the EQ cuts for, you know, a little bit of a different tone here and there. If I want a little more snap for some slap bass or to be able to hit some uh, tap harmonics or some tapping or something like that. But anyways, there it is. The Art Multiverb. Thanks for checking out this video, everybody. Do what makes you happy.